everybody. In this video, I'm going to make goat's milk soap. And the first thing I wanted to do was show you my ingredients that I will be using. One of the most important ones is sodium hydroxide lye beads. So that is in this container. And this is the dangerous caustic uh, part. I ordered this stuff on the internet from Essential Depot Bioproduct Solutions. It's EssentialDepot.com. Then um, I'm going to be using olive oil. These are my oils, cheap, just cheap extra virgin olive oil. Some lard, coconut oil. These are my essential oils that I'm going to be using because this is going to be a scented um, soap and one of them is rosemary oil and the other is lemon oil so it's going to be a lemon rosemary oil and each one of these has other properties besides just being just smelling good um, rosemary is or out on the bottle it says aching muscles arthritis dandruff dull skin exhaustion gout hair care muscle cramping neuralgia, poor circulation, and rheumatism. Um, I think mostly concerned here with, since it's going to be in soap, um, with like the dandruff, uh, dull skin, it's got antimicrobial properties. And then lemon oil um, says it will relieve symptoms of athlete's foot, colds, corns, dull skin, flu, oily skin, spots, varicose veins, and warts. Um, I think also lemon oil has uh, properties that's good for your skin, kind of exfoliating, it's kind of acidic. So anyway, besides smelling good, those are the properties. And then, I don't have it out of the freezer yet, but I will also be using the goat's milk soap, obviously. And that is already pre-measured out and it's in the freezer behind me because you want it to be frozen because you're going to be mixing it with lye which generates a lot of heat and you don't want to cook your milk and to avoid having that happen you use the milk frozen and you mix it with the lye in a frozen state so that hopefully it will not scorch the milk. Anyway. Uh, those are the ingredients, and I'm going to turn off the camera now and keep getting set up, and I'll come back and show you once I'm further along. Okay, I want to show you all the tools I will be using to make the soap. Uh, first, I've got wax paper and a shoe box that I'm going to line with the wax paper, and I'll be using some clothes pins to hold my wax paper in place. I'll show that to you once I get it set up. Right now I don't have it have it in there yet obviously, but that's my high-tech soap mold. Then I have a hand electric mixer. I have a like mashing potato mixer uh, stirring spoon that I'll be using to mix the lye with the frozen milk. A thermometer because I'm going to need to take some temperatures. I've got two large stainless steel pots. The smaller one is going to nest inside the larger one. The larger one will have cold water and ice in it. That's what I'm going to mix the lye and the frozen milk together in to, also to, to help keep it cold while I'm mixing it. I've got another saucepan here that I'm going to use to heat my oils up. Then I have some safety glasses. I'm wearing an apron and most people would advise that you also use rubber gloves um, because of the caustic nature of the lye but I've done this soap making so many times and I've never once had even remotely close to an issue with the lye like splashing or exploding or whatever and my rubber gloves are kaput so I'm not going to be using rubber gloves but I'm just going to be extra extra careful this is my highly advanced soap mold, which is basically a shoe box with wax paper. 
uh, inside and I use little tape clips and um, clothespins to hold the wax paper. Then I also have a digital scale because your ingredients need to be weighed. Uh, the ingredients are not by volume, they're by weight. And then over here I've got uh, several containers that I'm using to hold my oils um, until I'm ready to pour them into the saucepan and heat them up together. As long as I'm here by the oils, I might as well go ahead and tell y'all, I'll uh, post my recipe for, you know, the amounts and stuff and how to do this at the end of this video and probably on my blog too. But uh, this is 13 ounces of lard. It's, I think, there's 15 ounces of olive oil and 12 ounces of coconut oil. The amount of uh, lye crystals that I'm using is 6 ounces. And once again, all of this is weighed. So it's not by volume, it's by weight. Okay, <laughs> now I'm doing the, probably what would be considered the most dangerous part. Notice I've got my safety glasses on, I'm wearing my apron, and I'm just gonna be really, really cautious. But I'm going to mix the lye, which is very caustic, And if it comes in contact with anything wet, that's whenever the reaction is, gets set off and it will burn your skin. Um, anything that it comes in contact with, it's nasty stuff. But I'm gonna mix it. I've got my ice cube frozen goat's milk already in the pot, the small pot here, and it's inside a bigger pot. And the bigger pot has cold water and ice in it to help keep it cool. And the reason that I am having it frozen and wanting to keep it cold is because once this gets mixed with a liquid, the lye, it causes a heat reaction. And we do not want to scald or cook the milk. So here goes. It's melting my cubes of frozen goat's milk and some of it is kind of turning a like yellow color, but that is supposed to be normal. And I'm just gonna mix this until it's it's all like a liquid together. Be careful while you're doing this that you don't splash any of this uh, material onto yourself. Just try to be really careful. Because it will burn you. And you certainly don't want to get it into your eyes. Some people on the internet report that they, when they mix the lye with the uh, liquid, that they have it, it like, it kind of explodes or whatever, but I've never had that happen. Now I am heating my oils and I want them to be between 110 and 125 degrees. So I'm working on that. That's the milk and lye mixture still on ice because I want to keep it from heating up. Okay, I've added the lye and milk mixture into the oils and I'm starting out just stirring it by hand. And then in a moment, I'll switch over to the immersion blender, the electric blender. Okay, now I'm using the immersion blender, and I'm going to blend this until it reaches trace, which is whenever you drag it through there and it's kind of it's thick enough. It's like kind of a soft set pudding texture, I guess is what I would call it. You'll be able to see it when it happens. And at that point is when I add the oils, the essential oils. Still blending, this could take a little while. But it's starting to get thick. Alright, here's what I mean by uh, getting to trace. 
Come over here closer so you can actually see. It's whenever it kind of gets like where you can see the little lines in it. It's getting to a kind of a pudding like consistency. <laughs> and that's, at that point, you can add the oils, which I'm about to do. And then uh, after that, you pour it into your mold. You can add other things too, like um, oatmeal or l lavender pieces of flour, just whatever. Rosemary. And I think you always want to add a little more oil than what you think because as the soap cures, some, a lot, some of the aroma and stuff goes away. Lemon. Very fragrant, isn't it, Dave? You can smell it. it smells like I'm making a cake. <laughs> All right, here we go into the mold. Okay, there's my soap in the box and I put a piece of wax paper on top of it and now I'll just set it uh, out of the way place so that it can cure. Um, Got to leave it in the mold for at least like 24 hours and then it'll be hard enough to take out of the mold and then I can cut it into pieces and let it sit and it's best to let it sit for several weeks to completely cure and get nice and and hard. Here are some finished bars of soap from the last this is from the last batch of soap that I made, and uh, I pretty much made it exactly the same way as the soap that I showed you in this video.